Hello and welcome to another episode on Maritime Radar. The Nigerian Port Authority in February 2021 launched the Electronic Call-Up System for Trucks at the port in Lagos. The MP Electronic Call-Up System, which is powered by a web application called ETO, is expected to put an end to the Apapa Road nightmare caused by articulated trucks and corrupt security and traffic control officials. Restoring sanity to cargo operations at the Lagos ports, this brought about a widespread optimism concerning what the new electronic call-up system would achieve. The electronic call-up system managed by Truck Transit Park Limited is an app through which truckers are expected to book turns to enter the port. The launch of the electronic call-up system has reduced the traffic gridlock along the port route and cut cargo dwell time, thereby making the port more competitive. Assessing the success or failure of the Eto call-up app to address the perennial gridlock seen on Lagos port access routes are some of the issues that will be on the front banner and today's show. I'm Norma Obiaswalo. The chaotic gridlock seen on the access routes to Nigeria's port is to be addressed with the introduction of the electronic call-up system called ETO. As movement in and out of the port was nothing to write about. Port operators and residents of Apapa, Tinkan and its environs spent hours on the road before they could access their homes and offices due to the gridlock. Many firms and residents were forced to relocate from Apapa. The gridlock also seemed to defy all known solutions that the government deployed to tackle the crisis. Port users, especially truck owners and drivers, had accused the various tax force teams set up by the government at some point of high-handedness, bribery, corruption, and sabotage. The horrible traffic on the port access roads caused haulage costs to skyrocket as importers abandoned their cargoes in the seaport due to their inability to move it out of the port as a result of the high haulage cost. Before we get further on to today's lineup on the program, let's find out the latest in maritime news. The Nigerian Port Authority, NPA, has expressed frustration over the existence of 20 extortion points along the Mautu Tinkan Island Port Access Road, where illegal monies are collected from truck drivers before entering the port. The NPA Port Manager, Lagos Port Complex and Chairman, Eto Project Implementation Committee, Charles Okaga, confirmed this in Lagos while also announcing that the MPA is set to embark on a demolition exercise to remove all shanties and legal structures along the Tinkan Island Port Corridor in collaboration with the Lagos State Government. According to Okaga, the activities of non-state actors collecting these illegal monies from truck drivers have caused the drivers to divert to using the Jara Axis to gain access to Tinkan Island port, which has created pressure on their Papa Axis, with the Jara Bridge now in need of rehabilitation due to pressure. He added that NPA's collaboration with the Lagos State Government has aided the clearance of shanties and areas obstructing port movement along the Apapa area to the Jara side. President Bola Tinubu has approved the appointment of Dr. Dayo Mubiriola as the Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA. Mubiriola replaces Dr. Bashir Jamo, whose four-year tenure ended recently. His appointment was announced in a statement by the President's Special Advisor on Media and Publicity, Ajuri Ngalali. He said Mubiriola, who holds a PhD and an MSc in Transport Economics from the University of Wales, United Kingdom, is a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Transport, UK and Nigeria. Before his appointment, he had served as the Managing Director of Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority from 2003 to 2015 and was also the Commissioner for Transportation in Lagos State from 2015 to 2016. The statement noted that the President expects the new Director General to bring his vast experience to bear in his new role and to achieve the mandate of NIMASA in providing world-leading standards of maritime safety administration, maritime labor regulation, marine pollution prevention and control, search and rescue, as well as improving cabotage enforcement, shipping development and ship registration in accordance with the policies and programs of the administration. 
A maritime security firm, Ambry, has said no fewer than 20 suspected pirates boarded a cargo ship off the coast of Somalia and took control of the ship. The vessel is the latest to be targeted following a resurgence of attacks by Somali pirates in recent months. Ambry said the ship was a Bangladesh-flagged bulk carrier heading from Mozambique to the United Arab Emirates. It said there are conflicting reports about the whereabouts of the crew of the bodied ship. According to Ambry, the incident happened about 600 nautical miles east of Somalia's capital, Mogadishu. The United Kingdom Maritime Trade Operations Agency also flagged the boarding incident and advised vessels to transit with caution. Somali pirates had been dormant until late last year when they started attacking ships again. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is Maritime Raider, the managing director and co-founder of Truck Traffic Park, Jama Omubariri, at a stakeholders' engagement, spoke on key achievements of the ETO platform, which he noted has successfully facilitated 1.6 million articulated port-bound and non port bound trucks in its three years. It has significantly achieved a massive reduction in the cost of moving cargo out of their Papa and Tinkan Island port by 65%. It has also successfully reduced traffic around the port corridors, resulting in a significant improvement in the average turnaround time for port-bound trucks from an average of two weeks to just three days. On the other hand, some stakeholders are of the view that with the gridlock and chaos still seen, on the access road to the Port Lagos spot means that the A2 call-up system hasn't met its set objectives, therefore may have failed. In this chat with Jama MDTTP, he speaks on why despite the set achievements by his company, what proactive steps is taken to reduce human interface in order to address multiple extortion of truckers and how the perennial gridlock can be totally eradicated, bringing succor to residents and businesses. These are many more in this hot but solution-driven conversation. Stay with us. Okay, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you, Nama. Um, let's start this conversation assessing the three years uh, operation of the ETO app. Um, your company, GTP Limited, uh, talk us through the journey so far. Uh, what has been your key achievement? Uh, what have been the, of course, I know there have, there have been challenges all the way, so can yes. you share the challenges with us okay. and tell us what to expect? Okay, let me start with the challenges because that's what brings the solutions and um, the accomplishments. We faced a traffic that had been ongoing towards the port for over 10 years and it got increasingly worse in spite of the various interventions that the government sought to do to manage the traffic. We noticed that this traffic was caused by a multiplicity of factors. So I just mentioned a few. One is the human element. The traffic brings about um, opportunity for some individuals and sometimes for some organizations to make a lot of money from the frustration of the road users. So that was something that we, we had to deal with because those individuals and organizations wouldn't be happy for a solution that takes the feeding bottle off the amount. We also had issues of road construction that had been ongoing for quite a while, but there were several reasons for the delays. We also had a, a, a major challenge with infrastructure. The road infrastructure, the port infrastructure has not expanded to cope with our increasingly import dependent economy and the fact that our population was also increasing from what it was in the 1930s when the ports were originally built. So all of these factors melted together to form the intractable traffic situation that Papa and Tikan Island ports uh, were facing before we came on board. What have we achieved so far? We have dealt with the issue of the traffic. We've been able to reduce that traffic to just before the port present. Um, before 2021 February, if you are coming from Surulere to the port, it may take you two hours. Now, that same journey will take you about 30, 15 to 30 minutes, depending on other road factors. So that's one key achievement we, we've had. We've also been able to reduce the cost of moving cargo from uh, several millions of Naira, about 1.6 million Naira some uh, three years ago, 
to about 600,000, 400,000, depending on the size of the cargo or the size of the container you're evacuating. The informal payments that used to go to Agueros, area boys, police officers, last man officials, and others, that has uh, largely been curtailed. That the revenue uh, from port access is now channeled electronically. The government can account for what revenue has come in, and it goes into the pocket of the government and other identified stakeholders within the ecosystem. We've also improved working collaboratively with the Nigerian Ports Authority, the quantum of exports that are processed through the Lagos ports. This has uh, increased threefold from 2021 when we came on board to January of this year. So these are some of the key um, achievements. In addition, of course, to employment, which we've created more than 600 direct and indirect employment from the solution we brought on board. You, you mentioned in your answer that you've used technology to be able to. So can you tell us what exactly the technology, the advanced technology you have used and what efficiency have that driven for you? Okay, so let me describe the technology this way. If you are to board a flight from Lagos to Abuja tomorrow morning, you very likely would book before you arrive at the airport. In, uh, by booking before you arrive at the airport, the airline could make provision for a seat for you. So that booking ensures that you have a seat. The airline is also expecting you to show up for boarding. Okay. So they make sure that they make provision for you to be serviced during boarding. So we deployed a similar technology for the management of truck traffic. What the technology does is to have a profile containing all the trucks that would do port business. So if your number has five trucks, you would need to register those five trucks on the app. Okay. That registration will be under your name or under your profile. Okay. You would also register the drivers who typically take these trucks to the port and back for you. You also need to have an electronic wallet all on the app. So you fund that wallet, either you transfer from your card, your bank, or any other means of electronic money transfer, or you can pay money into a bank account and we manually fund that wallet for you. Okay. So when you now have a business at a port, for instance, you would then need to book for that movement. So I'm taking this truck from this point to this port or this terminal. Okay. The system will program you to select an available park. That pack that is programmed to service that port or terminal you're going to will be provided as options for you to select which one of them you would like. And immediately you make that selection and complete your booking. Your wallet is debited for the amount for that transaction. Okay. So you don't need to pay cash to anybody. You don't need to sort anybody on the way. You don't need to bribe any police official. That ticket which you've generated from that transaction enables you to move from your garage or wherever the truck is coming from to the park that has been programmed for it and then from that park to the port when the port signals that this truck or this number of trucks can come that is how the technology in simple terms so so but if you look at what you've enumerated here you see that a lot of work has been put on the um, background to ensure the efficiency of this app uh, so but how will you rate in your view um, the eto app in solving this uh, perennial gridlock as seen because we can still see uh, gridlock on that on that route and then uh, what will you now say to stakeholders who also feel that the app has not really achieved uh, the aim in, in which it has launched and may probably have failed okay so in terms of rating the app i will say that um, the app has achieved over 95 percent of what it was intended to achieve the app has been functioning in the manner that it was designed to function in fact we have been making um, updates on the app almost on a weekly basis. In the past three years, we've done over 100 updates on the app to increase its efficiency, to increase its security, and to give assurance to the users. We have ensured that it is on a first-come, 1st first serve basis. So if your truck is going to Terminal A and another person's truck is going to the same Terminal A, but your truck came before that truck into the holding pack, your truck would leave to the port before the, That was not the case before. It was who pays more before who gets in first. So that's a significant achievement of the app. We have a standard operating procedure for categories of um, categories of cargo or categories of business that trucks are going to do in the ports. Each category of business has its own SOP. So if you're carrying an export, it's not exactly the same process as if you're going to pick an import container out of the port. The process is different. So because the process is different, there could be scenarios where Perhaps somebody who is going in with export is giving preference because of the SOP, okay. not because of the owner of the truck or the owner of the cargo. Okay. 
Okay. So the guy who is going into the port to drop an export may be processed in faster than the person who is going to pick an import because as a country, we need the exports to generate uh, dollars as revenue. So the preferences being the prefer given is for export. So the preferences being given is for export and it is captured in the standard operating procedure. So it is not something we dish out based on who is in front of us. So I would, I would like to mention that I could give you right here the list of the stakeholders who typically complain about the app. And the reason why they complain is not altruistic. It's not because the app is not working, but because the app is not working for them, for their personal interest, because these are some of the people who were benefiting from the old order. So right from when we kicked off, we've seen a lot of opposition from these individuals. And each time you read in the newspaper, you trace it to the same people. It is the same complaint. Like I said, this is not, this is not the reason why we're here, but I, I just said it's important to mention that, that individuals who say it is not working have a bone to grind, not because they want the public good. Uh, but, what's some, but, but we still see um, the gridlock going to Apapa. Correct. So, so why are there still gridlock? Yes. So I'll mention two or three factors. One factor is that some parts of the road are still under construction. Okay. If I write in front of our, our premises, the road right in front of our premises is being constructed. The road construction is being done by the federal government. State government and even we ourselves have done palliatives that cost us a lot of money to try to put the road in some shape that is um, safe for the trucks to move. So that will snarl the traffic. Road construction would naturally slow the traffic. The second is that there are still um, unapproved checkpoints. Okay. If you are on that road, you'll see multiple police, LASMA, and other agencies' checkpoints on the road, okay. which we believe that with the call-up system in place are not altogether necessary. They have an app which we have built for them to be able to check on the spot. So that brings me to this question to say, you, you, you've already mentioned uh, this human interface. So what proactive measures are we taking? Are you taking to Correct. be able to address this? Good. So we and have... also the extortion of truckers. Okay. So as a private company, we cannot sanction police officers who are conducting extortion. We can only bring complaints of our customers to the attention of the government. And we've done so. So it's in the, it's in the ball of the government to do something about the extortion. I understand that both MP and Lagos State government are taking steps to deal with the extortion point. But on the innovation side, we have come up with what we call the E-Tag. The E-Tag is an electronic tag that is attached to the windshield of these trucks so that they no longer need a paper ticket which can be manipulated for them to gain access to the ports, to the terminals, and to the parks that warehouse them on their way to the port. So we are currently waiting the approval of the Nigerian Ports Authority in order to deploy that solution. When it is deployed, you will need less human interface between the point of origin and the port. So, so does that solve the issue of um, a fake tickets, fake plate numbers and all that? So with that, you no longer have issues of fake tickets and fake plate number because you no longer have a paper ticket or a metal plate number that you would fake. Every detail, original detail of the vehicle will be programmed onto that tag, which you can't change. You can't change it and that tag will only be activated when you have an active business to do in the port. Okay, we are due for a break. When we return, we'll be looking at uh, the holding bays and the exchange rate, but that will be after this short break. Please stay with us. New Central TV, Africa's number one storyteller, has come with the best of both worlds. With a combination of news app and live TV, we ensure that you keep track of the latest headlines, breaking news, and in-depth analysis from professional journalists from around the continent. Download the New Central TV app on Android and iOS and get started today. Don't forget to follow us on New Central's social media platforms. New Central. Africa first. If you are just joining us, this is Maritime Raider and I still have with me Jama Onwabariri. He is the MD Truck Transit Park Limited. Before we went on that break, uh, you talked about uh, uh, what you are doing to eradicate the paper tickets and all that. So, uh, and also review human interface, those uh, uh, challenges are on the table of MPA, you said? Right? Yes. So uh, then let's move to uh, the complaints about holding bays because we still see trucks on the road. Uh, the truckers say they are not also happy to park their trucks on the road for days. They don't, they don't have their bath, they don't do that. So what provision 
is being made for holy bees. And again, I'll, I'll tie these two questions. Uh, what uh, have you been able to do uh, to um, eradicate the challenge of rising um, exchange rates for cargo clearance? And how have you been able to cope with that situation? Okay. So about the holding bays, uh, as the name implies, they are to hold the trucks. Yes. They are bays for the trucks. But before the trucks are to come to the port, they are to go to any of the approved holding bays and wait there until they are electronically invited to the port. Some truckers would not want to go to the holding bays. That tendency to, um, uh, to shunt, as we say in Nigeria, to go to the front of the queue. So you mean not... there are holding bays that could take these trucks, but they prefer to be on the roads? They sometimes, some of the drivers prefer to be on the roads because although they have obtained one legitimate business to do at the port, say to go and drop off a cargo, they are also hoping to get another Car. business to pick out from the port. Or they are going to pick from the port, but they want to get one they will take in so that they can make one trip for two transactions. Okay. So because of that, some of them prefer, oh, even after being checked out from the holding base, they will not move. They will rather wait along the road or move at a very slow pace while they are trying to get maybe a call for another business. So that is one reason why you still see some trucks. And why is that not addressed? So one of the key elements of this solution is what we call an ethical extortion-free enforcement, okay. which is that the law enforcement agent, be them police or LASMA, can check on the app we've built for them. Why are you standing here? They mm -hmm. check and your details show that you are actually processed to be in the port. So they hurry you along. And if you refuse, you tarry, they can tow you and they can find you. So, but what happens sometimes is that the individuals who are supposed to make this enforcement rather collect money from the driver and then let him stay there. And as long as he's staying, staying there, nobody behind him can move. So that sometimes causes congestion. Some uh, holding bay operators from our investigation have also sometimes tried to um, allow the trucks to go straight from their own garages, from the garages of the truck owner straight to the port, while they try to do what they call um, uh, virtual processing. So the truck has not has not physically come into the park, but they will register on their app that the truck has come in. So they collect money from the truck driver to allow him that sort of express, illegal but express service. That is part of what this e-tag, which we have designed, will solve. If the truck has not gone to park A, when it gets into when it gets to the gate of the port, the port will not let it in. The barriers at the port gate will not let it in because the the e-tag would digitally notice that you have not physically visited Park A. Okay. So the e-tag is also a geotagging device. It, sh it shows that I have been in this premises mm -hmm. before I came to my office. So if I came straight from my house to my office without touching base here, mm -hmm. I will not be allowed into the office. That is part of what the e-tag is supposed to. So that would deal with that issue of um, illegal express service. So um, looking at uh, your partnership or collaborations with MPE and Lagos State Government, how has that impacted and improved? Because it's obvious that um, aside from technology, there are some level of enforcement that needs to be in place to ensure that if we must resolve this issue. So what um, have this partnership or collaboration with MPA and um, Lagos State Government, how has it impacted or improved this etocolop or the uh, further uh, renovations you are making on the app? Thank you. First of all, without Lagos State Government and the Nigerian Ports Authority giving approval for us to deploy this solution, we wouldn't even be here in the first place. So we thank them greatly for the vision and the foresight to deploy a tech-based solution to the traffic problem. Um, if you are working with the government, you are working with your big brother. So you have to follow the, le the, the, um, the lead of the senior partner being the government. And because, again, the government is responsible for enforcement, which as a private company we are not able to do, we have to rely on the enforcement uh, services which they provide. Policy is another area too that the government is directly responsible. We can make policies, the government will need to make we policies, can advise. but we can provide advice and we can provide um, implementation strategies, which is what we are doing. For the good of the maritime industry at large, what have you been able to do to ensure, uh, to bring this, you know, sometimes it's easier to, it's good to bring your enemy closer. So those people you think that they are, uh, observations or their criticism have not been objective. Have you been able to somewhat uh, liaise with them, just uh, make them see the things probably they've refused to see are working with the app? Have you been able to do that? So we have regular Because engagements. at the end of the day, what is important is 
that the maritime industry moves forward. Correct. So we have regular engagements with almost all the associations in the maritime industry, the port operators, the freight forwarders, the shipping agents, even the trucking associations. We have okay. regular engagements with them. Okay. We actually sort of consult them okay. on feedback. Okay. Please tell us what is working, tell us what is not working, tell us what you like, tell us what you don't like. We have those regular engagements and it is off the back of those feedback that we have been making improvements on the app. In fact, at some sessions that have been had with even with government agents, it was the transport unions themselves who were promoting the solutions or the innovations which we brought. They say, government, please approve this. TTP has come up with, please approve it, we like it. We are sure it's going to work. So we've had those kind of um, engagements and feedback. And we believe that that constant engagement, both with the private operators, the maritime stakeholders, the government agencies, as long as that conversation continues and we mutually listen to each other, improvements will come. Before I let you go, uh, you've done this for three years. I mean, the Eto app has been for three years. And also you mentioned in the course of this conversation that is the construction and the infrastructural deficits uh, is what, uh, why we are seeing um, the gridlock now. But somewhat, uh, it's as if this gridlock have defiled any solution. From your experience in these three years, what practically, what is practical that you think that we stop, aside from the two things you mentioned, infrastructural deficit and the road construction, we will put an end to that gridlock. I want to, I want to go to our papa and be able to say in 15 minutes, in 20 minutes, I'm there. Two words, political will. Okay, good. That's all. Political will is what will resolve the gridlock scene on Apapa and Tinkan Island. Those are the words of Jama Ongwari. He's the managing director of Trust Plant Big Banks Limited. Many thanks for your time on the show and um, the things that you are doing. I wish you good luck and um, I look forward to uh, going to Apapa in 15 minutes. You're welcome. Thank you, Norma. And that's our show this week. I hope the objective of assessing the success or failure of the Etocolop app was achieved as addressing their papa and tink and green lock is imperative to driving port efficiency. Join us every week on My Time Radar as we explore potentials that will ensure the development of the maritime sector in Africa. You can also expect the latest in global and local maritime news plus industry insight right here. I'm Norma Obiasola. Many thanks for your time and see you again next week.